example of drought tolerance. And so these are growing right out of the rock. And with, with, so what we do is we harvest all these, uh, all this plant material. We, we pile it up over here, and then we sort them by size. So when we plant them, they're they're with their their neighbors roughly the same size. So they don't you, you don't get a big uh, dominant. You know, so if you put a, a large one next to the small the small plant, it gets shaded out. So you you can put a larger pe a larger piece will shade out like uh, you know four plants around it. Yeah. And so you. And um, and the, the the size of the fruit is dependent on the size of the, the weight of the plant. There's a there's a one to one ratio between plant weight at flowering and um, and the ultimate fruit weight. So um, what we do is we plant pine, you know we we plant all these suckers and we plant you know so we build plant tops in one row, um, you know of the, of the same size of, the, of a similar size uh, and then uh, and then. Each row is, is, is we, we we segregate them by size. And do you, do you um, do a, like a space? I mean, how much space do you need? They're, they're ten inches. They're ten inches apart. Okay. So that's and we're, we'll, I'll show you that how yeah. we do how we do yeah. that. That's that's coming up. So okay. they're ten inches apart, and so we we try to maximize the, yeah. the space that we have, and um, but we do have to allow room for um, for them to grow. And so what what we do is we wait till the 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 plant gets up where our target fruit weight for instance is between between four to six pounds you know it's not an exact science and and they don't grow up exactly even but they um but we we plant them and then rough you know as a rule of thumb grow them for a year we force them into flowering which is now I'll get into the details of, of forcing um, and then six months later, we have a fruit. So it's an 18 months turnaround, roughly. <coughs> and um, and so we put on all the all the, all the or 90 90 percent of the fertilizer is put on foliar. Okay, so we have a um, we have a tractor over there that has a boom on the side of it that that hangs over three rows with nozzles. We have these these these. Uh, uh, Fertilizers that are completely water soluble. They're 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 made specifically for um, uh, foliar applications, and they're they're formulated. In the the one great thing about pineapple is that um, uh, it, it it takes up nutrients directly through the leaf, whereas mo most often most nutrients have to go. Or, I mean, they do it very efficiently. they 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 um, and that's that's partly because of their drought tolerance, they're they're um, they they technically is what they call it. They're they they're a cam photosynthesizer, and what that means is in like like cactus di and different different types of plants are cam photosynthesizers, and what they what the cam photosynthesizers do is they they photosynthesize like regular regular plants, except for the fact. That they don't release the oxygen or in carbon dioxide until until the photosynthesis has slowed down in in the evening, so as to, to retain uh, that that retains the moisture. You know, because if they're open up in the middle of the day, they they would desiccate. They lose a lot of moisture, and so they um uh, so in so they they then they have a. Uh, uh, the um, organelles on the plant surface, called stomata, which are are they're for gas exchange, and so they open up, in, in as soon as the, as soon as the sun starts to go down, you know, like four or five o'clock, it, it, it start, starts to cool off. The um, the the stomata open, they release their oxygen, and they, they go into what they call what is termed a res respiration phase, and they let let loose with all these the gases and then um uh and so they do that in the cool of day they're also if you can see see this and on the surface of the leaf you see this waxy dust right. dust it's a it's a, it's, a, it's like it's, it's it's like um uh it's produced by trichomes which is another organelle on the surface of, on the, the underside of the leaf which produces this wax and it and and it's um it's, it's basically waterproof it's like Gore-Tex <laughs> okay. um, they and and so that's how they conserve their moisture and but what the the reason I'm telling you this is one so while I'm putting on 
I want to if if I want the maximum use out of these um, these uh, foliar fertilizers, right. I put these on while the stomata are open. So my neighbors think I'm a crackhead up at night um, uh, um, uh, fertilizing, you know, at eight o'clock at night. But I'm just trying to get the the, the plant is able to just uh, to uptake the the fertilizers. And I use these real high tech fertilizers. Um, you know, I've shifted into um, their their products that are very they're pure might like my, my salesman goes yeah well you know roughly they're food grade fertilizers you know hmm. they're um so i've gone from using say for instance just my nitrogen inputs you know which i i use they used to total about 120 pounds per acre mm -hmm. and now i'm using um uh and you know in your, your kind of shotgun approach some of it is usable by the plant some of it isn't because it's it, the form that it's in you know it's a it's a sure. urea or a um uh uh, um, or in a nitrate form, and um, these are most the, the the forms that they have it in. So at any rate, I use seven and a half pounds an acre. Oh wow! So, um, uh, and, and 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 so if I do it if I do it right, um, we're we're putting it on the evenings, and uh, there it is. So that's um, that's that's what's handy about having them be very, very drought tolerant is mm -hmm. that. that um, you know, and they've known this for a long, a long time. They may not, they may not have been able to uh, see the organelles or anything like that, because you need an electronic, an electron microscope to see them to actually see them. But they did know the the, the correlation between putting fertilizer on at night and in oh. um, and, and, and the daytime. So if you go in up where they where, where berries where they grow a lot of pineapple, you'll see these big they have you know, I got a little 400 gallon tank, they'll have a 5,000 gallon tank and, um, and, you know, like a water truck, um, with a hundred foot boom on it, you know, where, and they're, they're driving 30 miles an hour through these things and they're, um, uh, but anyway, that's, that's, um, that's how we make it, that's how we make it grow and up to size in, in a year. It, it, it might take a year. Sometimes it, it takes less, you know, if I can shave off a couple months, that's to my benefit. Sure. Um, the, the 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 guy that I, that the that I buy fertilizer from they're 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 a company out of Pennsylvania but he's from Costa Rica the salesman and he goes they've actually in the they they grow pineapple in Costa Rica you know pretty much not quite on the equator but um, it's uh, it's definitely the tropics yeah and they um, they've cut it down to from plant to harvest to a year nice you know and they um uh and he he attributes i, I don't think everybody everybody uses um the, the same stuff but there's there's different technologies these days that um you know that they're they're actually getting into these uh uh organic products that are you know or they may they may not be produced organically or anything like that or that but they're they're based on kelp kelp products hmm. that that give they they in you you include a little bit in the, this concentrate into a mix you know i mean i'm talking about a quart or a liter in a hundred gallons of water wow. you know but it, it but it gives it, it it has humic acid it it, it kicks it keeps the plant growing all the time so when you put the fertilizer on you, you it goes you know you go when and so i went from putting fertilizer on for once a month to twice a month but you know with much smaller doses yeah. And um, it's made a huge difference. Cool. And, um, uh, Is too much water can damage the pineapple then? The too much water on the pineapple. I mentioned uh, the, the flower. I mentioned forcing pineapple. Okay. So the flowering of pineapple is dependent on um, uh, the presence of, of, of a, a very small amount of ethylene, which is is produced by the plant uh, when generally around this the the two solstices mm -hmm. you know like um uh, is that are they solstice no <laughs> um, um, um it's a that's a tongue twister um so but generally for the most part it's the it's just the solstice the winter solstice it's december 21st that's when the day length changes mm -hmm. is the days start start to get longer again okay and what and, and in in with environmental conditions such as the, the temperature, you know, it gets it does get cold here. You know, um, we'll get we'll get 
fronts, the, um, they call them shear lines that come, th come through from the north. Um, it'll, there'll be a north wind that'll blow. It's in the, you know, it can be in the 50s. Yeah. You know, um, and which is cold. I mean, everybody around here is walking around like, <laughs> and they're, you're itching because the, it, it not only is cooler, was it, as the temperature drops, so is the humidity. Right. You know, and um, so it has a drying effect on the pineapple, especially with the wind blowing yeah. over it. You know, so you get a wind blowing over three or four days. But at any rate, so the plant goes into the, with, and then with the day length ch change, um, there it's the plant basically goes. I mean, like the plain head plant has a brain. It probably has a bigger brain than me, but um, uh, but it goes um, it goes into into stress. And in, in that stress condition, it produces a minute amount of, of ethylene. Mm -hmm. I mean, like a hundredth of a part per million will cause pineapple to flower, wow. okay? And ethylene is, is a plant growth regulator that's produced by plants. It's in, it's in, it's in ripening, you yeah. know, like you say, for instance, uh, a lot of people are familiar with taking avocados and putting them in a paper bag and closing the bag up and putting them on the, mm -hmm. on the windowsill. To, to speed up the ripening and what you're doing is you're they're giving they're ripening they're giving off ethylene gas as they ripen um, and and you're concentrating the ethylene gas and the um, uh, and the and you're speeding up the ripening if you really want to do it a little more or that you want to speed it up more you put a ripe banana in mm -hmm. and um, you know a, bl a banana that's gone yellow to black is giving off a lot of ethylene um, in the flowering process it, it Produce a little bit of ethylene, and the um, and um, and that initiates flowering. Okay, so when I'm living on a little island, I have a limited um, uh, amount of buyers. You know, I sell at the farmers market. I sell at the um, uh, I sell to some of the little natural food stores. I actually sell the Whole Foods on Oahu and stuff like and and. Um, uh, I'll give you a little, the, some the real the real details, but what I can't I don't want to produce any more than I can sell, because I did I did actually go to college, and I started in business administration with a um, uh, concentration in economics, and the one thing I remembered from economics was the the supply and demand curve, and the price, mm -hmm. and um, when you have when you when you have an excess of product. The, the the buyer is going to beat you down on price, sure. you know, or you're going to eat it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I want to even out my production. So if I waited for this, you know, like, um, so if it's flowering in December, around Christmas time, six months later is June and July, mm -hmm. right? And uh, if I have all the fruit then, and then none the rest of the year, I'm out of business. Right. And so these we just finished harvesting this this is one that i, I am able i have a product that um, um when mixed with water and um i i put a light i put it in a backpack sprayer and, and walk along and do it with a just put a light mist on hmm. and it's enough to initiate flowering because like i said it only takes a hundredth of a part per million right. per plant to to make that happen and so in 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 so it's roughly that concentration and I mean, you, when I'm walking by, you can barely see it. You can see the little mist hit hit the leaves, and that's enough. That's enough. And just walk, you know, walk through it. You know, at a at a, at a pace like this, walking through. And um, so I can, and I'll, I'll I'll do three rows, for instance. I'll, I'll do three rows or four rows, and then I'll do another four rows uh, ten days later, and um, and then ten days later, ten days later, and. Uh, and then and so, are you deciding by maturity by the size of the plant size of the plant yeah so there's times where i go do one row here one row here it's like okay like a schizophrenic did it but um which i've been accused of <laughs> um but i want to get i, I want to have pineapple that is of, of the right size so like okay so i mean not to uh, you know now we're going over the whole farm because what we have is the stuff that i did on that i forced and we have there's a actually pineapple growers have a name for it. It's called precocious flowering. The stuff that actually flowered in, I mean, the flower flowering was initiated on its own right. in in December and in January, and it's so it's all coming due right now.
ended with. Okay, come on, you guys. Your, your job is to eat right now. This is a short little.